The use of fossil fuels is releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, raising their concentrations, in particular carbon dioxide. Now that carbon dioxide in turn can dissolve in the oceans, making them more acidic. That's a process called ocean acidification. Uh, sea life, uh, anything from plankton to mollusks, indeed the whole food chain can be affected by ocean acidification. In this lesson we're going to explore how carbon dioxide increases acidity and how that increase in acidity can affect marine life, in particular uh, living things with calcium carbonate exoskeletons or shells. How are we going to demonstrate the concept of ocean acidification? Okay, so we're going to do it through um, three experiments. All the experiments are linked, so we first find out what carbon dioxide does to the water. We then look at what a seashell in that type of environment is going to, um, is going to produce, the carbon dioxide bubbling, and then if they're exposed for any length of time to it, how that is going to affect those, those organisms. For the first experiment, you need salt water. Each group needs two beakers or cups, one lid, two straws, a pH meter or universal indicator, and a stopwatch. For the second part, we need salt water plus household vinegar, two cups or beakers, one shell that has been soaked in vinegar for two days, and three shells that haven't been soaked. Each group will need a stopwatch and some one kilogram masses. Um, the first experiment, we're going to be um, looking at the uh, effect of carbon dioxide in seawater. First thing they'll be doing is um, putting their straw into the seawater through the lid, and they're blowing continuously, and after 30 seconds, they take the actual pH of the solution. So they're investigating it with a lid or without a lid. So we're looking for a change of pH from um, slightly alkali to slightly acidic. As more carbon dioxide is produced, uh, more carbon dioxide is dissolved into the ocean, and therefore um, it tends to move more towards the acidic range on the pH scale. If you've got pH meters, by all means try them. Maybe do a comparison between those and the universal indicator, or just do the universal indicator. How does the lesson then progress? Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to get a couple of beakers again, same size beaker, small preferably. Um, and we're going to make a couple of solutions up. One which is um, about 30 centimetres cubed of seawater and then 30 centimetres cubed vinegar. It doesn't have to be that quantity, so long as it's a half and half mix. And then in the other beaker, we have um, the same volume, but in just vinegar. What this is to do is this is to see what the um, effect of an acidic environment would have on a seashell. Um, when we place the shells in them, we would see a difference in the number of bubbles produced in the full acid compared to the half and half solution. The students will write down their observations of what they see. And, and can you substitute anything for shells? Yeah, you, you can, yeah. I mean, you don't have to use shells from the beach. I mean, we're lucky we live by the seaside, but you can use eggshells as well, or anything with some form of calcium carbonate uh, in it. You know. All right, so um, we can now look at the effect of acidification on the strength of shells. Uh, we then take a shell that has already been exposed to an acidic environment. So what we do with these shells is we soak them in vinegar for about 48 hours. So we then move on and um, we take a, a, a cardboard guide tube, we place that in the centre of that and then it's a case of every 15 seconds or so, you could do it less than that or more than that if you wish, um, you place a weight, a mass, on top of the shell and just make sure that that is in that guide tube yeah, and then you wait a certain amount of time just in case you hear any cracking or any yeah. split on it any health and safety configurations <laughs> there's, there's plenty of health and safety considerations um, not only are we worried about the masses falling off the table but we're also worried about trapped fingers underneath them as well yeah. and it's important that students don't drop them onto the shell um, they place them gently. And as I say, if you have it facing inwards on the table, like you have, then we've got less chance of them falling off. So today we're going to be doing an experiment to... Uh, we're going to take salt water, so seawater, and you're going to add carbon dioxide to it. And you're going to do that by breathing into it. And we're going to see how that changes the acidity of the seawater. And then afterwards, we're going to see how that change in acidity affects marine life. 
Now, all the stuff we're using today has some form of irritation in it, and we don't want it on our bodies or in our eyes, so we will all be wearing goggles. Okay, so we've got two beakers with 60 centimetres cubed in of seawater. You're then going to place a lid on one of them, okay, which is a tin foil. Using the sharp pencil I put on your desk, okay, you're going to place a hole in there, because that's where your straw is going to go. Then place a second hole, because that's where the pH probe is going to be able to go. Okay, so I take a deep breath. I hold it for a, minute, for a few seconds, and then I start blowing. On that 30 seconds, you stop breathing into it. A little stir with the pH probe, okay? And then let it, and then you should take the reading off the pH meter, place it into your um, table. You then do the same thing again for another 30 seconds. You continue this for two minutes. After two minutes, you stop. Uh, you need to be very careful when you are blowing through this straw because it will bubble and, and come up over the side, OK? Do we have to measure um, at zero seconds before we Absolutely, start? Absolutely, yes. We do measure at zero because we um, need a base point for what our solution was at in terms of pH. Right, remember, blow, do not suck, OK? You will not want to get this water in your mouth, OK? So just be aware of that, OK? And don't blow too hard. I think I... Temperature. Two, one, stop. <laughs> How was that? What does it say? Six point five seven. What did we see with no lid and then with lid? No lid started. Um, quite high and then it made its way down but then it went back up again um, and with a lid it started high and then made its way down. What do we think the lid has done then? It might have trapped some of the gas. It has trapped some of the gas in there hasn't it? Okay so what we're looking at now is the effect of that slightly more acidic seawater on living things like seashells which have calcium carbonate in their um, exoskeleton. On your desk you should have two beakers. You are going to take Seawater, and in the first beaker, you're going to put that up to 30. And then you're going to add 30 vinegar. Okay, it's white vinegar. And in the second beaker, you are going to do 60 vinegar. It's a very easy experiment, this one. Um, if you spill that on yourselves, you'll smell like a chip shop all day, so just be aware of that, okay? We're now going to take the two shells that... Two of the three shells. What you're going to do is you're going to place them both at the same time in the beaker and you're going to write down some observations. So does anybody have any predictions what's going to happen? So one shell is in the full vinegar and the other shell is in the half seawater, half vinegar. Uh, the shell in the vinegar will dissolve quicker uh, or break down quicker because the vinegar is more acidic. <laughs> So is one more obvious than the other one? The um, full vinegar one is more bubbly compared to the watered down one. It's, and the water's going more like grey, cloudy. Yeah, cloudy. We're now looking at the long-term effects of those same organisms that have been um, subjected to an acidified ocean. We're going to look at the effect that could have on their shells. Okay, so this is kind of a strength test. The way we're going to do that is you've got a shell on its own in um, your little dish here. It will look really white because these have already been subjected to um, acid conditions, OK? You're comparing that against the other shell you had left, which you'll notice the difference in them if you look at it. Observation-wise, you'll notice there's a difference in between them. One of them has still got um, colours on the outside of it and the other one is like a white kind of chalky effect on there. Now, the way we're going to do this, set back on your table, because health and safety, um, we need to think about that still. We're going to place our shell within the guide tube. And what you're going to do is you're going to be placing the masses on top of it carefully. OK, you're going to wait. Now, you can set a timer for this. OK, and what we're looking at is any weakness in the structure of those 
shells caused by an acidified environment. It's a little bit more worn away, so we'll see if that changes anything. I think I had a crack there. Yeah, that's cool. All right, take them off. Can you hear anything? Mm. Mm. Yeah, Bruce so caved in. Collapsed in. Obviously. Yeah, okay. gave in after about four. Okay, next okay, one. The next one. I don't have any ideas. I'm surprised it didn't break completely because it was like it felt really weak. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Right, I'm just gonna hold it because. Hey. Oh, it's yeah. so it's brilliant. <laughs> It's, it's interesting, we talked about, didn't we, what, what effect it will have. And it won't, it, of course, it's not going to produce organisms that just shatter. That's not what happens. But it will result, we think, in, in, in organisms that are smaller and more brittle. And so it will change the, uh, well, the balance of life in the ocean. Um, we've got to remember that we are not saying that the oceans are acidic. They are not acidic, OK? What we are getting is a slight increase in acidity. If we look at it on a pH scale, we still can't call it an acidic ocean. All we can say is the acidity is increasing slightly. So I suppose there are lots of connections between these you know, simple experimental results that you can demonstrate in the classroom and much wider global issues. So m uh, most people know about the rising levels of CO2, but they don't necessarily link that into things like coral bleaching and the habitats that that destroys. It's this type of activity is more accessible to the students and by doing a practical, it kind of puts an idea into their head of, oh, hang on, this is happening because they're actually hands-on and seeing it happen. Reading it in a newspaper or hearing it on the news because they're not physically doing it, they tend to not make those links. I thought this lesson was wonderful. I think the students really enjoyed it because it was very visual. They could see this change in acidity, ocean acidification. And with the shells, they could see the link between that process and climate change.